What is this sorcery before me? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sweeney with another episode of Mr. Sweeney's Tips and Tricks. And today we're going to talk about vinyl records, record players, how these things work, the impact that they had on our society, and a lot of good other information. For uh, today's demonstration, I've got a couple of records I want to share with you here. This one is a Victrola 78 record. I've got another one here, which is a 45 single play. And last, but by no means least, this is my favorite album, Chicago. So let's get started. Records and cereal boxes. Seems like a kind of an odd thing to talk about at the same time. What do records and what do cereal boxes have in common? Well, I have to confess to you, this is going to be one of those, eh, when I was your age type of the stories. But true, when I was your age, if you're probably 13, 14, 15 years old, we would go to the store and we would get a box of our favorite cereal. And when I say our favorite cereal, it wasn't the cereal inside that we were actually after. What we were after was the toy that was inside the box, you see, because the first thing that we would do when we would get home is we'd open that box of cereal up, we'd reach our grubby old paws down inside, and we'd fish around for that little plastic toy that we pull out. And then we didn't really care about the cereal, but we got that plastic toy. It was really cool. There was one other thing that we used to get in the cereal boxes as well. If you got a box of cereal, sometimes as an added bonus, in addition to that toy, you got a record that was actually part of the cardboard on the box. Maybe you like your Lucky Charms. Maybe you like your Cinnamon Crunch. Maybe you're like me and you're trying to eat healthy. You would actually get the box and you would punch out a record on top of here and you would put it on top of your record player and it might have a secret message it might have an advertisement it might even have the latest song out on the radio for the purposes of our discussion we're going to talk about three different kind of record types there's the 78 the 45 and the 33 and there's a couple of others out there, but we're not going to worry about that format for right now. We'll just talk about the big three. So what do these numbers mean? Well, um, we're going to find out. We'll be experts on that by the end of this video. But before we get that far here, I want to show you these are 78s. And if you look at the label on there, this is actually in a foreign language. It's in German. And I actually had to reach out to my daughter, who is a German major student at Drexel University, and ask her, how do you pronounce this? So this is my daughter, Lisa. She was kind enough to send me an audio file. And here you go. Schnitzelbank and. Okay, so that's one. And this one right here is the second one. Story of the Rose is the title on this one. Let me get this in front of the label here. And here is the second one. This is the artist. Reinhold Ferreinath. I wasn't even going to try to attempt to pronounce that. So now we say 78s, 45s, and 33s. What does all of this mean? I would sit in a classroom and I would rotate the records like this and I'd say to my students, so what do we mean when we say 33? What do we mean when we say 45? What do we mean when we say 78? And they didn't know that I was giving them a big clue right here because this record here, this 78, is designed to spin 78 times in one minute. That's why we call it a 78. This one here is designed to spin 45 times in one minute. And then I've also got a 33 LP over there, 33, actually to be exact about it, 33 and one third rotations per minute or RPMs. By now, I'm sure you've heard of records being referred to as vinyl. And the reason for that is because they are made out of vinyl for the most part, vinyl being a form of plastic. But as I said, for the most part, before they were made out of vinyl, like this one here, they were made out of slate. And you had to be very careful with this record here because if you dropped it, then you could possibly have this happen here. And that's not a good thing. The newer records are made out of vinyl and are very flexible. As you can see, I can bend and twist this one all around. And no harm, no foul. This record's going to play just fine. 33s, 45s, 78s. What's the difference? I'm glad you asked. This is a 45. 45 RPMs. And it's what's called a single. It's actually got a single on each side. So one single song on this record, same as the 78s. The 33s, on the other hand, well, you got a lot more with this package. Unlike today, when you buy a song from iTunes, for example, you're actually not buying something that you can hold in your hand, not something tangible like a record. 
you're actually just buying a digital file that you can't even really hold. What's the fun in that? When we would go to the store and we would buy our Chicago album, we would bring this album home and we would tear the plastic wrap off of it and look at all the stuff you get in here. Check this out. First, I'm going to lay it on my lap here. First, you get a poster of Chicago. Pretty cool, huh? But wait, there's more. You get a poster of the band. Let me see you get one of these the next time you buy something off of iTunes. And a lot of times when Chicago and a lot of other bands would put their albums out, a lot of times they also had messages that they wanted to send, agendas that they wanted to accomplish. And in this right here, this was inside the sleeve. And if you take a close look at this, you can see this is information for voter registration dating back to 1972. So you'll notice that when you bought an album, you got a lot more than just songs to play. The album comes out of the sleeve. Take a close look at this album in the glare of the light, and you're going to see a couple of very thin lines right here. These are separations between the song. And this particular album had one, two, three, four, five songs on this side. Reverse it and you got five more. So what is all of that about? Let's take a closer look at those grooves, shall we? Let's talk about how these records work. When a record is manufactured, it has small grooves. When the record begins to rotate, a tone arm comes across and drops a cartridge and a needle onto the record. As the record rotates, the needle drops into the track and the needle senses the vibrations and turns these vibrations into electrical pulses. These pulses are amplified and then sent to a speaker that reproduces a sound that we call music. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a record player that plays 33s and 45s. One final thought about this. How does a record player know the difference between playing a 33 and a 45? Well, the truth being said, record players really are not all that smart. All they do is just sit there and go around and around in circles, you know what I mean? So what you as the user has to do is you have to set the speed selector for the proper speed. If you want to listen to a 33, you've got to set it to 33. If you want to set it to 45, you've got to set the speed selector to 45. The record player. And now that you are an expert on the record player, I'd like to ask you this one question. Let's say you want to play a 33 record back and you have the speed selector set on 45 instead of 33. That means that this record is going to rotate faster than it's supposed to. I'd like to know this. Will the pitch or the voices of this record go up or will they go down? That's the question I'd like you to answer in Google Classroom. Be sure to answer that question. Yes, it is a graded assignment. And please leave any comments, questions, or concerns in that little comment box below.